You guys know I'm a big Ableton guy. Even my third first three videos on this channel was, you know, how to use Ableton and how to produce mix in Ableton. So when Ableton drops new stuff, I tend to get excited about it. And today Ableton actually dropped a look at their new Ableton Live 12. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today together. All right, let's get right to it and just dive right in. Ableton Live 12. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, yeah, let's take this piece by piece. All right, first thing that they showed this thing on the bottom here, that's crazy. So they, looks like they're redoing the bottom of the interface. The top looks like it's staying the same, your transport area, but it looks like the bottom is changing to be more streamlined. It also gives you like a preview of the, of what you have in it. So like I can see that there's like an EQ there, some sort of reverb maybe, and like a limiter or something there, and maybe like an e another EQ. That's super cool. What else, what else do we got? So, it's using the arrow. Interesting. All right. Now, <laughs> this, this, this is, this is huge. <laughs> this is actually massive. Um, it's a little thing, but it is very annoying to, to have to like hop back and forth between clip view and all of your like plugins and stuff on the bottom. Um, I mean, this is like, yeah, especially if you're just working on one track and mixing and stuff, this is, this is going to be super helpful. Oh, what does that do? So you can like go to, that's so cool. I have some stuff I'm going to have to look up on their website in a minute and find out. So it looks like they added filters to finding, uh, filters to the search area, your bins. And then a show similar files option. That's interesting. Some new skins. That's whatever this part to so this part. Very interested in this part. So MIDI pattern reshape. I think it, that looked like he was pulling it based on the cord. Yeah, that looked like it was pulling the arpeggiation based on a parameter, which is super sick. And that is that was that a round robin type thing? Step sequencer, maybe like a generative step sequencer. Interesting. Something about this looks different too. Maybe it's just like some of the edges are rounded. Maybe it just be like a UI thing. Yeah. It might just be a UI thing. It look, kind of looks nice. So tunings, you can sort by tunings now, I guess. I don't know. I wonder if it, I wonder if it search it, like if it registers it by, by key and BPM based on like whatever the sound is. Like it seemed here, 
like whenever they selected this and it was in a different key, it shifted the key while they were, while they were seeing if like, you know, checking it to see if what it was, um, doing like the little listen back thing while it was in playback. Oh, this is a new instrument, I think. Unless this is a Mac for Live instrument that I don't have. Um, but whatever Deep H is, looks like a new instrument. We're gonna have to go check that out in a second. And then Roar looks like a new effect. I wonder if it's replacing the distortion plugin. A new granular plugin. Let's go, let's go check out AbletonLive.com. Here we are, Live 12. Reshaping MIDI patterns. So that was the thing that I saw them looking at whenever they were doing like the, I was saying, I thought, I thought it looked like it was moving in key. So generative, generate inspiration. So yeah, this is, it's like a generative round robin type thing. Tunings is like an area. It looks like it's an area inside. Is this a bit? Okay. This is a video. That didn't really give me any information, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it looks like it's, I guess until I get my hands on it, that's gonna be a little bit complicated. Choose a scale in Live's control bar to see its notes and MIDI clips anytime you create. Let's Let's check that out real quick. Interesting. So that's like a chord builder almost. Because it just said add interval. Super interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's that's super helpful for anybody, especially like newer people getting into using Ableton for the first time that like aren't super proficient in music theory or like chord building and things like that. That could be super helpful. You just pick the key that you want, just like click add interval and it kind of shows you like what your in key options are. So that's going to be super helpful. Okay. New, new stuff, new stuff. Meld. What is meld? MPE compat capable synthesizer. Cool. I have an MPE keyboard, so that's going to be helpful. Textural soundscapes, harmonic, atonal sounds, and rhythm. So another atonal textural thing, which is probably not going to be useful for a lot of people. I mean, I guess like a lot of Ableton's users are like EDM people. So yeah, I mean, it looks like, it looks like another synth. Um, it's pretty cool actually. I actually really like this layout here on the bottom though, um, where you like, it kind of walks you through the creation synth process. Now these macros can be a little, uh, it looks like a lot, especially for people that are newer to using Ableton stuff for like using like macro controls and mappings and stuff. But like, I do really like this here on the bottom. Um, you get, so it's choose your type, like your, your wave type, your engine to like, I guess it will looks like it changes based on what of these you choose. And then it feeds into your envelopes and your, your LFOs. 
and you can kind of map those. Those feed into your filters, then you mix, and then you choose things like if it's unison or if it's got spread on it or add drive or things like that. That could be super helpful for like newer people getting into synthesis um, that are like trying to learn, you know, how to how to build sounds. Uh, that could be that could be kind of nice. All right, roar. What is roar? I said it was probably like a dis it's a distortion. It said it was a distortion, but like I wonder if it's replacing like the saturation and distortion device or whatever. It looks like apply heavy distortion to a specific range. See, yeah. So it looks like it's a better version of like the distortion or or saturation um, audio unit that was in Ableton a lot before. Um, but it ha comes with ma a matrix so you can add some envelopes to it which is super cool I that'll actually be pretty useful for different kind of sounds um some of this stuff is like could could it's probably going to end up being a little redundant um because a lot of synths that are third party have this kind of distortion matrix in it uh like a serum or like an Anna 2 or a Vital. A lot of them have these kind of things. I don't actually know if it's on their distortion unit though. I'm sure it's mappable to the distortion unit in the effects section, um, but I've never really thought about it. So maybe that's new and I'm just not thinking straight, but in my mind, like I, you'd be able to do that anyway on some other third party stuff, but it's nice that you'll have, you'll be able to do it inside of Ableton with whatever you want, basically. Um, a vocal could have a cool sound on it, a drum. This could be really cool on drums, actually, depending on like the style of the thing that you're going for. Granulator three, uh, it's granular synthesis type engine. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So not an effect. It looks like you can drop in your own because this looks like a sample. So you just drop in your own sample, do all sorts of stuff to it. Granular synthesis is wild. That's not a thing that I'm like super familiar with. So I don't know how to like speak on it a ton, but uh, I do know a lot of people use it to some like really cool, cool effects, uh, like stretching sounds and like spreading them out over like time and things like that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do some really cool stuff with that. Let's see what else we got. Whoa. They, <laughs> yo, <laughs> this is, this is something that people who don't use Ableton actually get really frustrated with that they're used to, which is the, the mixer not being in the same place as the arrangement view but now you can put it on the bot, dude. Dude, the, really funnily enough, this actually kind of looks like a weird cousin to FL Studio now. Um, yeah, this is, this is super cool, finally. I wonder if this will actually help me mix better in Ableton. Cause that, so if you don't know, I mix a lot in Pro Tools. I don't mix a ton in Ableton. I actually produce more in Ableton uh, solely. I, I tend to export and mix in Pro Tools, but this will be, I wonder if this will help me. Just like, I don't know, I like the being able to do the mix window stuff and not like look at the timeline of what's coming and just kind of be more intuitive um, with some of my moves. And then, yeah, the thing I said before about it being able to stack options yeah, dude, that's so freaking cool. You got your mixer down here. You got your, now, now the thing I wonder about this, cause uh, up here in this little uh, thing where my mouse is up here in the top left of the screen, it's got like your screen options. And I wanna know, can I separate this? I think you can already do this, but I wanna know if I can like separate my sections. I don't, I doubt you're going to be able to do this, but like have my arrangement window 
like here and then have like a second screen or like a second monitor like over here somewhere and put my mixer and then like all of my effects like below that bro that'd be so sick but I, I highly doubt that's I they're very much like a single screen use case kind of a DAW so I doubt it's gonna be that flexible but this is still a big upgrade very excited about this it's a small thing I don't if you if you as much as I use Ableton this is like a big thing for me but for most of you you're probably like ah we've had that forever Pro Tools has had that forever lots of other dolls have had that forever but you know Ableton plays catch up sometime what is the sound similarity search So we're looking at sounds. Interesting. Yo, that's so cool. You're kind of hot swapping. It's kind of it's kind of like an extension of the hot swapping feature, except you're able to filter your results by the type of thing that it is. Um, so like you click on a hi-hat, it brings up other hi-hats specifically. Instead of you having to go through and search or be in a folder that already has all of those things, it'll look across your folders say here are all of the hi-hat loops that you are you you have that are in similar bp it looked like similar bpm um to that one uh that you're currently in maybe well that was i'm not sure if it was underwhelming or not so i guess final thoughts is it's okay it's not I, I this feels more like a update for regular ableton users rather than like some updates in the past have been more ableton's making these big upgrades you should use ableton live this one feels more for like hey hardcore ableton user fans here's a lot of like small little things that can help you speed up your workflow or help you, you know, do things differently or some things that I'm sure they've been getting questions about, like the, the mixer in the arrangement window thing. Um, yeah, some of it's very Ableton niche centric type stuff. The new plugins seem cool uh, as far as like the new instrument and the new uh, effects. Those seem cool. I could see how this was of a more underwhelming one, but honestly, for me, as like a big time Ableton user, I use it every single day, multiple times a day throughout a whole year. Some of these things will probably speed up my workflow a lot or just give me like ease of use as far as being able to like, the triple screen thing I think is the, 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 like being able to have the your plugins on the bottom and be looking at your clip view or MIDI view and be looking at your arrangement view on the top, like all at the same time. Honestly, that's like the biggest thing for me, depending on your screen size, obviously that's gonna get really cluttered really quickly, but uh, I actually have a decent size screen, so that'll probably still be super helpful for me. Overall, it seems like a very Ableton centric one. So like I said, for me, I am excited about it. I hope the upgrade isn't super expensive, honestly. Uh, that's gonna be the tricky part is getting convincing people to spend money to upgrade on something that like doesn't seem like a lot. I actually think if you are in, at Ableton 10, this is between the upgrade you got at 11 and this new update, that is going to be super worth your money. But is it worth it if you're just upgrading from 11 to 12, if you update every time they come out with a new one? Mm, not sure. Let me know your thoughts. And if you're trying to learn Ableton or you're starting to get interested in it, here's some videos over here uh, talking about how to get started and how I produce an Ableton. And yeah, I'll see you over there in that one later. Yes.